available on YouTube a little later. But with that, I'm going to turn things over to Claudia. Great. Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate it. And uh, just so everybody knows, uh, Daryl, if you don't mind my saying so, uh, Daryl had a great um, accomplishment last week. He graduated from library school and he is now has now joined the ranks of those of us who, who have gone that route. So congratulations, Daryl. Thank you. Uh, we're glad for you. Uh, I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services. I think I know almost everybody. We are, am I unmuted? Okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I don't know what happened. Okay. But yeah. And you rec you're recording? Got it. Great, thank you. It's good to have y'all joining us today. Thank you for taking the time uh, to be here. Uh, we are focusing on the topic of staff well-being and recognition, but these conversations are for you. So if you have a topic you would like to bring up or a frustration or an, or, you know, uh, an accomplishment, that would be wonderful too. We, we want to hear all about it. Because it's a time of year we should be thinking of others, not that there are only specific times of the year that we should be thinking of others, but this time of year in particular. And uh, because the past two years have pretty much been a hot mess, I thought it'd be a good time for us to talk about what, what we're doing, what are libraries doing to foster staff well-being and um, recognition. Uh, some libraries have formal programs in place. Uh, for example, uh, I was talking to Renee DiPilato at the director's meeting. She said that uh, Sarasota County libraries and historical resources are just kicking off a program they've been working on for over a year to get started on. It sort of combines recognition and incentives. And I want to tell you just a little bit about it uh, before uh, we, we start our conversation. Um, so they have two awards. The first one is, again, this is Sarasota County. They have a team award that goes to a committee or a task force or department for exceptional efforts on a specific project. The team uh, will be given $2,000 to further their work. Uh, and they can use that funding for training, supplies, pretty much anything that has, uh, that'll enhance the team's work. The second award is for an individual for exceptional service. And that staffer is awarded $1,500 to use toward professional development activities. And I'm assuming that means things like uh, travel to conferences, registration, um, uh, uh, training, you know, trainings they may want to take, participation, that kind of thing. Uh, and they have a committee, uh, Sarasota has a committee that they ask for peer nominations, and then the staff is recommend, oh, excuse me, recognized at Staff Development Day. So they must have a day per year or something like that where staff are, are recognized. So that is sort of a formal example of, uh, uh, a program that's in place, but there are a lot of people who prefer to do something less formal or have decided to do something less formal because it's easier to do it that way. Um, so we we are fortunate we are fortunate to have uh, several colleagues who are joining us today to talk about what they're doing in their libraries to particularly to boost staff morale or to increase, um, you know, sort of this caring and, and, and nurturing uh, climate in their libraries for each other. Um, I want to welcome Renee Roundtree from Washington County Public Library System and Adam Brooks and I see Emily Young is here too from Alachua County uh, Library District. Thank you both for coming. Um, so usually what I do is just sort of start off with some questions, but if you'd rather I just was quiet and y'all started talking, that's fine too. But first thing I want to do is ask, and you can just raise your hand in the chat, um, 
how many of you do have some sort of well-being program? So you can raise your hand in the chat, I think, right? Do you see how to do that, everybody? Oh, there's, there you go, Brenda. Brenda Bruton has one. Okay, Brenda. Emily, yay. Okay, so a lot of people are here to learn about that. How about a staff recognition program? Again, it can be formal, it can be informal, whatever. Lucinda, great. Brenda as well, okay. And, you know, some of these things can overlap, obviously. Um, <clears throat> Okay, Brenda says uh, we have two, one for formal recognition and one for less formal. Oh, Brenda, would you like to, and Lena says the college has one. Lena, what college are you with? So did she answer? Ah, South Florida State College, great. Okay, awesome. Um, what is sort of the impetus? What was the impetus for, for you starting your programs? Uh, those of you who do have a program, how did you get started? Was it just something you felt passionate about and wanted to um, do something uh, for each other? It doesn't necessarily have to come from the top down. It can come from people who are actually um, you know, want to do something as a group to recognize each other and to to uh, provide, um, you know, emotional well-being. Renee, you want to tell us a little bit about your program? Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, we'd love to see you too. Uh, well, I have my laptop in the docking station and I don't have my extra external webcam set up. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> it, it's been a crazy Monday morning, um, which is now a Monday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. Totally. Uh, so we don't really have anything formal. Um, um, most of you know, but some of you may not know, um, that the library has, has had, we haven't had normal years in three years. <laughs> So um, things have just been harder for staff. Um, we had um, Hurricane Michael in October of 2018. Um, it took us, the library, well, I had two roofs that were damaged, but nothing major um, as far as um, library branches were concerned. Um, and nobody ended up homeless, um, thankfully, mm -hmm. out of our staff. But uh, the wear and tear that I started to see with staff dealing with patrons who had lost everything and were battling insurance companies and and FEMA and all of those things, you know, just kind of worried me. Um, so I was concerned about that. And then, and that went into 2019. And then lo and behold, here comes March of 2020 and we have COVID. And so that's a whole nother level of stress that staff has all of a sudden. And then in September of last year, um, our main library in um, Chipley took eight inches of flood water from Hurricane Sally, which was supposed to be a very small storm that was going to do no damage whatsoever oh, and sure. was going to just move away immediately. Um, it almost took 11 months for us to get back to normal and in our building. So um, the amount of stress that staff has just dealt with has just been kind of intense. So, you know, it's really an informal thing. Um, we have what I call like mental health days. I've told staff, if you need to take a mental health day, I don't care what you're doing. Maybe you go shopping all day. Maybe you stay home and clean your house. Um, you just text me, tell me that you're taking a mental health day, and I'm just going to assume that that's sick leave, and I'm not going to ask any questions, um, which I think is super, super important. Um, also, we do, like, sonic happy hours, um, which... I love that. 
Which apparently is like, you know, well, you know, they're good ones because they're not alcohol related. <laughs> um, yeah. But, you know, two to four is half price drinks at Sonic and we have a Sonic kind of close by to the library. So um, although you don't with if you order with the mobile app, you, it's actually happy hour all the time. So just a little heads up there for those that can't get away between the hours of two and four. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it, we always make sure that there are donuts and um, bananas or fruit or whatever else um, for every staff meeting. And um, one of the things that we've started doing kind of um, is we meet at a, one of our local Mexican restaurants, um, like on a random Friday. Um, library staff don't work on Fridays. And we just get together and it's Dutch Street. Everybody pays for their own. But we just hang out and we try not to talk about work, which is like the best thing ever. <laughs> Absolutely. So I don't really have anything super formal. Um, I really wish that I had something formal. Um, I think that the longer um, COVID goes on and the more stressful um, that things become uh, for staff, which I don't anticipate things really kind of slowing down anytime soon, um, the more that I will continue to look at something more formal. But we just kind of take it every day at a time, you know, and sometimes that means, you know, an extra run to the Piggly Wiggly to pick up some cookies yeah. <laughs> in the afternoon or something. So. Now, I, know, I know too, Renee, that, and you know, we, we talked about this early on in the DLIS discussions when you joined us to talk about compassion fatigue training. Um, so I think, you know, recognizing when your staff um, or, you know, if, if you're just, uh, you know, recognizing that a colleague is having a lot of trouble, um, you know, uh, getting some sort of support in there or to somehow guide that person and, and, and lend a hand is so important. So the compassion fatigue uh, training, you got someone to come in from outside. Is that correct? Yes. My wonderful liaison, Casey, mm -hmm. at Build um, got me somebody. And we did that, um, I want to say probably February or March, right after Hurricane Michael. Um, I was really seeing it among my staff um, and, you know, it, it's great. It's also, I've tried to be very, very upfront with my own mental health, um, you know, about the fact that I see someone, that I take medication and all of those kinds of things. So people don't feel like it's so taboo to yeah. realize that maybe they need more assistance, assistance as far as coping, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, when I think about everything that people have gone through, um, you know, who doesn't need therapy? <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. you know, a lot of people and especially like even this time of year, right? You know, everybody is supposed to be happy and, you know, wanting to celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything. But for a lot of people, it's not necessarily a happy time of year. So I always just try to be incredibly mindful of that um, concerning staff. So um, I, you know, it, I give them the option of taking two full weeks at the end of the year. Um, we actually close all of our branches with the exception of our main location. Um, and that helps people a lot. Wow, that is pretty incredible. Um. I want to just turn for a minute to Adam and Emily from Alachua County. Uh, so what what kind of programs do you all have and are they formal, informal? Um, how are they working for you? Hi, it's Emily from Alachua County. Um, Emily. And um, so we have um, with the county um, a wellness program that we participate in. Um, so they offer a variety of training programs and incentives um, during the course of the year. And then our own HR department internally arranged some um, training sessions for staff as well and some more discussion types um, sessions electronically um, that staff participated in. 
So that's um, mainly how we dealt with it. Of course, each of our locations has their own manager or department manager. And so I know that they've done some of the things with um, food, that type of um, trying to liven things up. Um, one manager has a candy drawer um, okay. and uh, frequently brings in things to share. For But I will say for a while with... Um, when we didn't know exactly how COVID was transmitted, I, that had to be um, yeah. held back as well. But now we've been able to open that up a little bit more. And I think that has helped staff a little bit, being able to celebrate each other, at least with their own internal group. Yes. Uh, so what, you know, what, uh, have you all done things in-house that, uh, in addition that are, um, to the county um, sort of programs, uh, do you have a like staff recognition that you are um, participating in? Um, right now, our main um, staff rec recognition that we do is um, the um, service time. So, um, but we are working on something um, in addition to that. So. We haven't um, laid it out yet, but um, right now all, all that we're doing is um, the staff year recogn recognition. And it's usually, I think 15 years and above will go um, beyond just recognizing them by name, but letting their supervisor give a synopsis of their accomplishments and interests and things like that. Wonderful. Uh, Lucinda, I think you said that, you, I'm gonna put you on the spot, uh, you said that you um, had a staff recognition program too. What are y'all doing? Uh, well, and we, ha we have two, two different um, uh, programs in library service. Um, one, we do a monthly staff spotlight and that's a one sheet um, for staff members. It's a photograph and they have a, we have a list of questions and they get to pick and choose four questions to answer. And that goes out to all the staff and staff really um, enjoys that. We started that just before the pandemic kind of hit and that's been very popular and it really allows, we have 14 branches spread out a large geographic county. So um, it really allows people to kind of put a name with a face and get to get to know people um, mm -hmm. a little bit. And then we have a formal called a peer choice award and it's quarterly and obviously it's peers nominate peers and there's an ambassador award above and beyond a make it happen and a behind the scenes and the um it's a blind selection so um they answer questions and it's sent to our activity project manager and then she kind of removes all the identifying information. And then we have a staff committee that selects the um, the uh, chosen folks for that quarter. And uh, they get a they get a little trophy, uh, but it's a it's like a little crystal trophy and Aww. they're very proud of them. They put them on their on their desks and they get a a, um, a pen to put on their uh, lanyard and um, even if they're nominated, they, they get something. So, so that's, that's been great. And then yeah. for, for years, the county has had something called caught in the act um, award. And that's just, that can be peer to peer supervisor to employee. And they fill out a, 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 a caught in the act form. It goes over to HR and they have a monthly drawing for a, a number of these uh, $15, um, Publix uh, or you know other gift cards, so that's that's good too. And people, I think more than anything, it's the recognition of receiving a cotton the act. Mhm. Mm mhm. And how often do you all do you do the um, cotton the act? So cotton the act is ongoing. That's um, any any time you see someone um, doing something or they work on a project and you want to recognize them for their for their leadership or for their assistance or great customer service. And then once a month, uh, County HR has a drawing and they give out about 20 to 25 
um, gift cards every every uh, every month. And um, but so like the I said, it's the county nice. funds that. The county does fund the program. That's nice. Okay. So did that start as in the library or did most of these things start in the library or were they county? Yeah, the Codney Act has always been a countywide um, recognition program, mm -hmm. but the Peer Choice started in the library and it was developed by a staff advisory team. We have a staff advisory team mm -hmm. that pulls employees from all levels of the organization and they rotate in it in onto and off of this committee. But uh, they, um, we wanted to have a recognition program just for library wide. Um, and so it was developed by, um, by the staff team committee. Uh -huh. And they are the ones that make the selections. I, I don't select who, who receives the awards. They, they, they make those decisions. Uh, do your friends groups help, help friends groups? Yeah. Um, help at all with uh, any of the, you know, uh, awards or anything like that? They don't help with the awards. We fund it. We have a special pr uh, programs line. So we fund it out of there um, for our peer choice awards. But um, all of the programs or the uh, run running to the Piggly Wiggly. We don't have a Piggly Wiggly. I wish we did so I could say we run to the Piggly Wiggly. But um, <laughs> <laughs> when you run to, uh, you know, Publix or Walmart or wherever, you know, bring uh -huh. in cookies or um, the friends groups like during this holiday season, we have quite a few of them that are providing box lunches. Mm -hmm. um, we have 12 friends groups, so yeah. um, it's it's really kind of dependent on the friends group in your area. But they're very generous and they they do enjoy um, providing uh, goodies and donuts and all of that to this to the staff throughout the year. Oh, that's it's nice. So helpful. they do that individually for their own library. They do. They do. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's great. Uh, so the the peer choice awards is that typically said as a gift? The, these are gift cards. The peer choice is a um, no. It, it's more recognition. It's okay. uh, it's a certificate, and they like I said, they get a, a really nice. I wish I had one to show you. Um, a really nice recognition um, plaque. I guess it's uh -huh. made out of glass and uh, they get to, they can take it home, but most of them display them um, at their desk. So, so all their peers are um, incentivized, I guess, to, to work hard to, to get a, uh, to, to get nominated, but uh, that's a, it's four quarters. So, um, you know, it's, it's not every month. And so it's, uh, yeah. But it's very much staff driven, peer driven. So, so do you have, does everyone put, if you don't mind my asking, do, does everyone put um, money in a kitty kind of thing um, for Matt, to support this or how, how does? We support it through our, we have a, a line in our budget for special programs and that's how we support okay. it. So we budget for it. Okay. Um, did you get any, did any of you all, um, except particularly, I would say, uh, probably Alachua and um, um, just went blank, Volusia, <laughs> did you all get any pushback at all from the county when you started doing things yourselves or, you know, um, I think that uh, there was a little bit of pushback in Sarasota, and that's why it took them a little bit of time to get this their program off um, the mark. Um, um, I would say I would say we did not in Volusia County. Our county manager encourages um, staff recognition, mm -hmm. um, and um, there's been a lot of discussion about it and a lot of discussion about um, what more the county can do on a countywide. Um, basis uh, a while back um, they did this uh, countywide they brought out food trucks and everyone got a ticket um, to uh, go in their area f to have lunch on the county and um, so and we do 
pre-pandemic, there was a um, annual staff recognition, um, starting with 10 years and um, moving up where you're invited to a very nice luncheon and be recognized. So um, our, our, I did not have any pushback. That's good. Um, so do, do you said, and everybody else, do you have committees that sort of help run this every year? Um, just one committee or several committees or who actually, you know, takes the ball and runs with it? <laughs> well, look, just quickly for Volusia County, we have a staff advisory team um, mm -hmm. and folks rotate every two, one to two years, depending on turnover, um, on and off that committee. And those are staff members from a it could be library assistant up to a branch manager, librarian three. But um, uh, our peer choice program is, it was designed by them and it's, it's, it's driven by, by that committee. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. that's for us, that's what makes it su successful is because it is, it's the peers um, recognizing each other. Yeah. Uh, Emily, is that what y'all do at, at Alachua? Um, we don't currently have a staff advisory team for that, um, but we do, um, one other thing that I forgot to mention was we have a um, specific award for um, outreach, so it's the Carol Hull Award, and that mm -hmm. we do have a committee um, each year that's made up of staff that looks at um, the nominations, which are nominated by staff members. Um, that Unfortunately, we didn't have this past year because there wasn't a lot of outreach, um, but we'll uh, reconvene that next year. Um, mm -hmm. And then in terms of the county, um, we're very fortunate that we are a special taxing district, so we pretty much operate independently. Um, now we do contract with them for certain services, um, but we do have our own HR department um, that has the authority to develop programs um, mm -hmm. within our governing board, so. That's great. Um, just so, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what we do here in the, the uh, Department of State and particularly DLIS, um, for DLIS, we just celebrated or kicked off our uh, annual Holly Grays, Holly Grays, <laughs> which is uh, the the um, bureau chiefs and uh, Amy, the division director, we get together, and thanks, Brittany, um, and provide breakfast to all of the employees and um, and the division. And we also invite other people to come to. This morning we had the secretary of state and um, her uh, uh, right hand person, I guess you would say and other people from her office, which was really nice. Um, but it's really a celebration of all the people who work in the division and how how hard they work through the year. And just, you know, whenever you break bread together, that's always a good thing. Um, so that that's always nice. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The rest of the time until Christmas, or maybe even after, I don't know, um, because I haven't been here that long either, but uh, they, we all bring our favorite dishes to share. So you have to be willing to put on some weight during <laughs> Holly Gray's or you're, you know, you better just run to your office <laughs> if you don't want to, because the food is just so fabulous and people are, you know, really, really keen on sharing their dishes and uh, sharing their recipes and that kind of thing. So we really, we really love doing that. Um, no rum ball, so apparently. Uh, uh, do, do you all have anything at, the, at any holiday that you celebrate as a group? In Alachua County, it's been more of a um, departmental um, versus the whole library district celebration. So um, I know one department in the past has celebrated Thanksgiving to the point of, I mean, it's a whole Thanksgiving feast. Um, and then other um, places do different. So um, the branch where I used to work, we would do something around the holidays. 
similar to what you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. your holograms, where it's a, a potluck, people bring things in. So I think each individual department has picked a time to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that idea. That would be a nice idea. Then we could have, you know, each division within the Department of State could be responsible for a week or whatever. That would be fun. That would also be a nice way to get to know other people in other uh, divisions and uh, bureaus. But for library groups, that would be nice to, to get to know each other, perhaps from other libraries um, across the county. Um, the other thing that um, we do um, is we have something called the Sunshine Awards, and uh, that is more of a peer recognition um, program. There is a committee um, you can nominate. It is not blind. I kind of like that idea of being, you know, having it blind, um, but it is not blind. Someone um, writes up you know, why they think this person deserves such a, there are several different categories of awards. And then you have other people who will agree to write a um, support um, letter, note, whatever, um, for that person. Uh, I don't really know how the decisions are made. I know that I'm sure that they try to, to distribute them among all the um divisions uh but um it, it's a nice way to to recognize people too it's an annual event um and the secretary of state runs runs that program um i think i've only been here once or twice since they've been doing it uh, again you know covid's kind of put a put a kibosh on a lot of things last year so we skipped a, a lot of um face-to-face -face celebration. So this year we're, we're getting back in the groove and I'm, I'm glad of that. Um, I see that Katie Cerise has shared with us, our county has a staff appreciation luncheon in December with lunch, county swag, ooh, years of service recognition, and we do have that too, and a raffle drawing. It's the entire county, so not quite lib uh, library specific, but definitely appreciated, absolutely. What kind of raffle, what are you raffling off? Hey, this is Katie, can you hear me? Yes. Thanks, okay, Katie. perfect. Sorry, I was muted, I was eating earlier. Um, basically, <laughs> they go to local businesses. Um, our county administrative assistants go to local businesses and just ask, sometimes it's gift certificates. Um, we've had like liquor store gift certificates, um, hunting knives, because we're in the panhandle of Florida. Um, <laughs> hats from different businesses um, uh -huh. so every employee as they come in gets um i think five little tickets and they just kind of draw the tickets and you get to come up whatever the prize is so um wow. in the past we've never gone and then last year i th thought it was kind of ridiculous that the rest of the county got to go and our staff our libraries didn't because we were open so wow. i requested our county administrator that we close the libraries for the morning or for the lunch and wow. um they didn't even argue. They said, yes, absolutely, please come. We wanna have everyone there. So this yeah. is actually, this will be the second year we've gone as a library staff. So um, yeah, it, that I only have one year of experience, experience with how it goes, but looking forward to another one. Well, that does sound fun. So that's something they've been doing for a number of years. Yes, to my knowledge, I mean, years and years, because they give out the plaques for years of service for the 15 and 20 and 25 and plus, and they give out these little pins for five, five and 10 years. So they let, and then they acknowledge any um, retirements that happen during the year, any sort of awards that people have received over the course of the year. So it can be kind of lengthy, but it's always a very positive. It was last year. I've only been once. I talk like I've been going for years, but it has been going on for uh, quite a while. Uh huh. That's great. Uh, so just to, to ask others here the question, if you um, didn't inherit a program, but you thought that you wanted to start something, what would you like to do? I mean, how would you like to start? I, I love the idea that Renee just sort of took the bull by the horns and, and did it kind of on her own, I guess. Um, Renee, I don't know if you have people who are helping you or if this is, <clears throat> excuse me, just your own thing. 
I, I wish I had people helping me. I always wish that I had more people helping me um, pull off stuff. Um, but the reality of it is, is that it's just kind of me just trying to do the best I can. Um, but I am like Katie and in that Washington County, they have a December Christmas party. It's in the evening. Um, it's out at this outdoor venue. It's like a big barn um, and it's a steak dinner <laughs> always. Wow. And um, then there are, yeah, you get your name as put in the drawing and like, you know, I ended up winning a $50 Target gift card this year. So wow. it's pretty nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, they go to local vendors. Um, you know, they have, I know it sounds crazy, but if you live in the Panhandle, it doesn't sound crazy. You get like a gift certificate to King's Discount Drugs, which is like the only place I know where you can buy like your pills, jewelry, and of course a gun. <laughs> Because oh, it's wow. hunting and fishing supplies along with like nice jewelry and but it's also a pharmacy. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's but awesome. it's a it's a most wanted gift if you get the gift certificate. So yeah. Um yeah. but you know, I just I wish that we had something a little more formal. But, you know, I just kind of have gotten as creative as I can be. Um the county allows me to keep my fines and fees money. Um, so as a result, um, you know, the, I don't have to worry about spending a taxpayer dollar um, on or a state dollar or federal dollar or anything on like a food item and and having somebody come back and be like, oh, well, you shouldn't have done that, um, which is very, very helpful. So <laughs> that's wonderful. Anybody have anything else they would like to share about that? <laughs> I do have a quick question. Um, this is Katie from Walton County. Again, sorry guys, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm trying to implement something within the county. Uh, last year we did a staff gift at our staff development day that has never been done before. It was kind of like branded library water bottles, the stainless steel ones, everyone loved them. We're doing it again in January. Um, but my biggest concern is obviously food items are great. You know, having a candy drawer, having Sonic Day. We have a lot of health concerns and um, dietary restrictions within our libraries that really prohibits me from doing that because I'm going to have a chunk of my staff who can't participate. Does anyone else have any great suggestions for like little happies to give out that aren't food items besides oh my they gosh. aren't super expensive? Uh, Katie, this is Jennifer up in Lake County. Um, so I was actually waiting for a break in the conversation to bring this up because um, I have been in the same position and it's one, you know, food is wonderful, but yeah, there are a lot of dietary restrictions out there. So um, one thing that I've started doing is uh, spending time with people, like taking some focused time to spend um, with folks who maybe need a little extra boost, a little pick me up. Um, you know, folks don't get focused time with their coworkers or with their managers anymore because we all have our phones and our tablets and everything going at the same time time. So really getting to sit down with someone and check in with them um, about their feelings in, in a professional way, of course, you know, but hey, are you feeling isolated? Hey, what's been your biggest challenge? What do you feel like you've succeeded at this year? And here's some things that I think that you've succeeded at. Um, folks don't get that so much anymore. And I've, I've been doing that this month, uh, particularly because I actually just started with Lake County in August. So still learning the ropes, but um, started my one on ones this month with that. And so far, everybody's been very, very receptive to that. Um, so, so spending some time with folks is a good non food thing. Um, also taking the time to hand write a nice note. Um, I know it still feels a little bit silly in this day and age where, you know, instant smile emoji, you know, great, thank you. But even just saying, hey, I noticed that you took excellent care of that patron. Thanks so much. I some, Somebody noticed, somebody saw. Um, yeah. And those, those are kind of my two go-to like non-food things. Um, so I don't know if anybody else has anything else to share. Those are wonderful ideas. This is Renee. Jennifer, You, that's great. That's that's awesome. That is like one of my goals for 2022 is to do that more more often um especially since things have been very 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 busy um but you're exactly right you know just taking that time like i try to sit down with most of my staff um at least once a month and just say hey listen you know 
what's going on, what do you have going on this month that you need to talk to me about. Um, it's a little bit more complicated because, of course, I have four locations and I don't always get to the other branches like I should. Um, but that opportunity for them to just come in and talk to you is a glorious thing. And sometimes they come in and talk to you about things that have nothing to do with work, like, oh, I got a new kitten or <laughs> here are pictures of my grandkids. Um, so, you know, sometimes it doesn't necessarily even just be need to be work related, even though I know you want it to be work related. Um, sometimes they just really need somebody to talk to. Good point. Uh, Lena responded to, to Katie's earlier comment. She said, it sounds like what our college does and we'll do Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, I guess, with lunch and meritorious awards. Uh, several library staff have been nominated over the years and only one has received one. And then she also said, in August, service awards are given out and in December, Mer meritorious president awards. Wow, so Lena, are those, um, uh, are they, do you get like a, a trophy or a, a, a some sort of recognition plaque or something like that or how do they recognize you with those awards other than the verbal at a at a girl or at a boy <laughs> i don't know if you're able to talk she might be on i know she's doing chat on uh, Ask a Librarian. So she may be back with us in just a minute. Um, if you had more help, obviously it sounds like people need more help to do this kind of thing, and a larger budget, what would you like to do? What kinds of things would you like to do um, to, you know, uh, for well being programs or uh, to recognize staff um, or each other, you know, how, you know, if the sky's the limit, so to speak, what, what would you do differently? If you would do anything at all differently, maybe you like what you're doing right now, just the way it is. This is Renee. If I, if there are no absolute restrictions, right? Not just, well, I mean, you know, they're you're not going to give them a house or something like no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> I would love to close the library for a day and us all go off and do something relaxing. Uh -huh. Some type of event or activity that we all agreed upon, which that alone could take a year to even decide. Um, but I would like us to do something like maybe we go to the state park, maybe we would go to the beach, maybe we would all go see a movie, something, maybe we would go bowling, something that would not be work related, but would be great for everybody's mental health and that the county would actually pay for it, which is, <laughs> yeah. I know is the pipe dream. Well, maybe, I don't know. That sounds like a wonderful dream though. Anybody have anything that they would like to uh, dream about? Well, this is Emily from Alachua County. I really love, um, and I think it was Volusia County's idea of the Peer Choice Award. So um, the fact that especially the, the identifying information is removed because that was something that we always struggled with when trying to think about something like that is we didn't want it to become a popularity contest and we really wanted to make sure that um, people were recognized um, I, I guess um, fairly and across the board so I think that that's a great way of doing it so I appreciate hearing about that. Is that something too um, uh, uh, Lucretia that you, not Lucretia, Lucinda, that you um, put in someone's performance evaluation, like uh, uh, something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we include that in their um, annual 
um, performance review. Um, we also, you know, include if they receive a caught in the act because those go to the supervisors as well. Um, mm. So, so we we absolutely keep track and and we we definitely make sure that that gets in their formal evaluation. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Excellent. Anybody else have any dreams? Um, I wanted to make a comment about the uh, the food because we do have a lot of people as well in the uh, in the division um, who you know have diets that we have to be in tune with, and it's really important for people to share that information so that you know it and can try and and purchase foods that they can eat. Um, I mean, you would do that for anybody. You would do that for a guest in your home. So surely you should do it for people at work, uh, you know, but just knowing that information is really important. And then marking the food, it, you know, that's one thing that we're doing this week with the um, uh, dishes that people bring in for the potluck, but I got Holly Grace, <laughs> um, is we're putting the recipe down so that people know whether some something's gluten free or whether it's got something else and nuts or you know whatever the case may be, so that people will will you know feel free to eat uh, what they can without fear of of having some sort of reaction, you know. Um, um, I wanted to mention too, Lena said that at her school, the service awards, you, you get a certificate and sometimes a pen. Pen. Um, she's having some Ask a Librarian challenges right now, apparently. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, I wanted to ask too, as you're working on a well-being program, have you considered adding into that program, whether it's informal or formal, um, uh, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and anti-racism, um, you know, uh, education, uh, training, something, something that, that can be fun, but also address challenges that we may be having uh, in our uh, libraries uh, not a challenge necessarily but more of an awareness and uh, I think that that's a really important aspect of addressing all you know as uh, all all things that that we are um, should be in tune to uh, as we uh, move forward in our in our lives uh, we this is something that's not only a work related issue but a a world view related issue. So is anybody thinking about those kinds of um, topics? Um, in Volusia County, at the leadership level, which for libraries, that would include um, our regional librarians and some of our, our other management staff, we have all been through um, diversity, inclusion, mm -hmm equity um, training but but I think where we're lacking in Volusia County is is um, making is providing training at the the staff level at the mm -hmm. you know front lines and and I think that we have to look for ways um, to, to provide that training um, to all of our employees and um, so I'm hopeful because at the leadership level department heads division directors and, and managers, we have had that training, but but we need, we need to figure out a way to to make sure that the training um, is available to all of our employees. So, one of the things that we've done here in in BLD, or well, actually a division, is uh, we started a book club, if you will. Uh, we started a a, a team, um, uh, and anyone can put. Uh, anyone can be a member of the team, anyone can put readings, uh, videos, trainings, you know, whatever uh, in that team to share with others um, what 
we haven't necessarily done as well is, uh, in my opinion, is talk about it as a group. We've, we've, we've done a little bit of that, but not as much as, as I would like us to do, but I'm, I, and I think probably as much as others would like us to do. But I, I really think that that needs to come from, um, from, a, from a group, sort of a groundswell um, perspective rather than a top-down thing. I don't know if that's the right way to look at it, but that's how I look at it. Um, anyone should be able to, to bring up what they want to bring up and start a conversation or uh, you know anything that will help us in connecting better with each other. Uh, I think it's important, but um, anybody have any comments on any, any of what we've been discussing? This is Renee and um, something that I didn't realize I was doing as far as equity wise was it, until after um, I was listening to Dieta last week in the conference is, um, we, the library purchases polo shirts with the library's logo on it for staff, mm -hmm. um, to wear to work. And the, of course we started, I was just purchasing everybody a summer read, right? T-shirt, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, you can easily promote the library during summer read. It, it seemed, and then we moved on into the polos and I realized that, you know, for some of my staff, they don't make a lot of money, you know, and you can't eat your benefits. Mm -hmm. um, so in some ways, the option of knowing that the library is going to provide the polo shirt, I think, has been very helpful. Yeah. Um, I'm going to continue to do it. Um, we're blessed with somebody local that does a great job on them. So and doesn't charge me a fortune. Mm -hmm. So. I think I'm going to continue on with it. And who doesn't like to receive like a nice fancy polo shirt that has the library logo on it, right? <laughs> and do the, do people wear that just whenever they want, or do you have a specific day of the week that that they wear it? Or um, what? pretty much all of my staff, and especially me since um COVID, <laughs> um, we are pretty much polo shirts and jeans nowadays. Uh -huh. um, I dress up for meetings and for like the BOCC, but that's about it. So, and we, you know, everybody has a variety of colors. Um, we all wear green on payday though. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, Renee, Renee, when a new employee starts, do you buy them multiple shirts or? Um, yes. They, well, generally they need to hang out with us for a little while. Okay. Um, but that's really that I've never really had that issue. Um, most people are like super excited to come work for us. Um, I, I can't afford to like offer them a whole lot. Um, but they know that they're not gonna have to work weekends cause our library isn't open on weekends. Um, they know that they have a four day work week, um, or a three day work week if they're, part-time you know they know that they're going to have paid holidays and stuff i mean, like so in my county the library job is a good job so you're not ever open on the weekends or is that just pandemic related no we haven't been open for the weekends um for well i've been working for the library for 11 years we've never been open oh. on the weekends we tried a saturday um we just the thing is, most people live in my county, live outside city limits, gotcha. so they don't come into town on the weekend. They're Got in it. town during the week, but not on the weekend. Well, that makes sense. Interesting. Thank you. Katie mentions, too, she says, completely forgot we did summer reading shirts this year, too. It was a hit, and staff all still wear them. Great. That's awesome. Yeah, we, we love t-shirts in Volusia County and uh, we do uh, Mango Mondays. Mango gave us a bunch of shirts. So everybody wears a Mango t-shirt and jeans on Mondays and uh, to promote the Mango, la Mango language database. But we buy summer t-shirts. Um, we buy these holiday, read into the holidays or whatever t-shirts. And um, so yeah, yeah, t-shirts are a hit here. Uh, there are not many people who don't like t-shirts, I don't think, uh, or polos, uh, but 
That's great. Well, y'all have had some great ideas. Uh, Workplace Pro, their stuff is so cool, Renee says. Is that the place where you get t-shirts? Yeah, that's where we get our holiday t-shirts, oh. for sure. Ah, uh, uh -huh. okay. Well, we're getting close to time, and does anyone have anything else they want to ask or share? I want to thank you all for joining us today, especially uh, Renee and Emily and Lucinda for sharing your information with us. It's really great um, to hear what other people are doing and what your concerns are and you know how to move forward. Um, this recording will be available, I think uh, Daryl mentioned, on VLD's YouTube channel. So we'll be sending that link to you uh, to anyone who registered actually um, to you, as well as a brief survey uh, that we hope that you will fill out on uh, the discussion today. Um, if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss or to introduce, please let us know. We'll be happy to, to put it on our calendar. Just shoot me an email. Uh, uh, in January, we're going to be using the DLIS discussion hour for the quarterly Koha user group meeting. So if you're a Koha user, um, uh, please consider joining us. That will be on January 24th at three o'clock Eastern time. And we'll of course be sending out re reminders uh, and building success, our newsletter, our website, social media, you know the whole bit. <laughs> Until then, uh, be safe. You all stay healthy and please let us know how we may assist you in your work. Thanks so much. Take care, everybody. <laughs>